Hello, welcome or welcome back to this rather enlightening series for the hip joints. My name is Alphonse and today we have a quite amazing lesson ahead of us. Maybe in the beginning just a small word of caution. This is one of the lessons best done on an empty stomach or at least not right after a big meal for we are going to lie on our stomachs for the better part of it. So if you would like to join me, I invite you to adopt a method of easiness and come to lie onto your front side. Make sure you have a bit of space to roll to your right and to your left at your leisure and then let's begin. So come to lie down on your front side, make yourself as comfortable as possible, uh, use cushions or blankets and have your head turned to the right, a bit to the right at least, and your legs extended downwards and take a moment or a couple of minutes actually just to arrive at the floor. Lay down your head on the floor, lay yourself down on the floor, on the front side. See that you can sink towards the floor. And then bring your attention to your left knee and press your left knee a little bit against the floor. So this shall be our first movement. Just the left knee a little bit against the floor and then let go again and your head is turned at least a little bit to the right. So the knee, press the knee against the floor and let go again. As comparison you could also press your left foot against the floor and see how that feels like. What is different between pressing your left foot, the toes, the forefoot, the instep, what is it that you can press against the floor and let go and then your knee against the floor, the left knee. So this is our main line of action at the moment, the left knee against the floor. You could press coming from different angles to turn your left heel a little bit to the outside. So to roll your leg a little bit to the left and then press your outside part of your left knee against the floor or roll your left heel more towards your middle line and press the inside part of your left knee more against the floor or the center of your left knee, your kneecap against the floor. <clears throat> and think of it, start to think of it as a functional movement. So if you would be standing, which you are not, we are lying down now. If you would be standing, you would draw up your knee towards your belly. But you cannot because there's the floor in front of you right now. But I think of it as such a movement, not as much as pressing the knee against the floor, but as if you would draw up the knee towards your belly. So this might change the movement because you change the way you think of it. And the rest of yourself, think, think of your torso and your head like a towel, like a bathroom towel that you would drop onto the bathroom floor. Let's pretend on a luxury hotel, it's a very nice bathroom floor, or maybe even a rug, like a, you just like a towel. Everything is relaxed, everything is at ease and resting, and you're just pressing your left knee against the floor. And again, this is a change in thinking when you press your left knee against the floor as if you would draw it up and everything else may move because there's no 
tension and no holding and no stabilizing, then maybe your left hip joint might rise a little bit from the floor, doesn't it? And your pelvis might roll a little bit to your right. Depends on how hard you press your left knee against the floor or how hard you might think of drawing it up. So that would be quite nice for the lower back actually. So press a bit more and a, press and a bit less. A very simple, gentle movement, innocent almost. Looks like there's not so much to it, but it's a, it's a big one actually. A movement of utmost importance. But also an easy start into this lesson. Now, <clears throat> after you have done this for a bit, shift your awareness to your left hip joint, the bony part there on your pelvis, the, the anterior superior iliac spine. Maybe use your left hand wedge your left hand in between your pelvis and the floor to feel that bony part on the left outside edge of your pelvis and press this area, press your pelvis against the floor. So instead of pressing your left knee against the floor, see how it is to press your this part of your pelvis, this bony little bit against the floor in the same fashion. So all of you is just resting you're just relaxing on the floor. There's nothing much to do except trying to drive this bony bit, this left side of your pelvis towards the floor. So everything might move and roll and shift while you try to find a way to press the left side of your pelvis against the floor, just you did with your knee before. Or you, can, you could alternate these movements, press your knee a little bit and then press your pelvis a little bit. And when you press your pelvis against the floor, you might notice that your left leg might come off the floor, so that the left leg in almost in its entirety lifts off the floor. So, we established something already, it's time to take a break. You could take a break on your front side, <laughs> after all these movements, take a break on your front side or you can roll onto your back. But here in this video we will continue swiftly and change over to the other side. So still on your belly, on your stomach, on your front side, start to press your right knee against the floor. Let's see how it is to press the right knee as compared to the left one. And when you press your right knee, you can press stronger or very lightly, just a hint of a movement or a, a even bigger movement, a stronger press. And if you let go of everything else if you are at ease with your shoulders and your chest and your neck. Yes, uh, the head, when you press the right knee against the floor, better to have the head turned at least a little bit to the left. Let's do this. The head to the left when you press the right knee to the floor and you can experiment with different angles so to have the heel of your right foot 
turned outwards, so you're pressing more the outside edge of your right knee against the floor. And remember to be at ease with your breathing. Nothing interferes with this movement of drawing up your knee, which cannot be drawn up because there's the floor. And then finally bring your attention to the bony bit of your pelvis on the right side, the anterior superior iliac spine. And press this part of your pelvis, the right side of your pelvis against the floor. Maybe wedge your right hand in between your pelvis and the floor to feel this space tightening to feel your pelvis almost like rolling a little bit to your right, pressing against the floor. And when you press your the right side of your pelvis against the floor, you might feel your right leg is coming off the floor. Your right knee lifts off the floor. a very peculiar activation of your glute muscles, of your back extensors, the lower back, maybe all the way up to your neck. <clears throat> so this is the most important part of this lesson. And the rest is just fun and play. We will have a little bit of fun with these movements. So either take a rest or we continue swiftly. Of course, the first thing we could do is to combine these movements. So to let's do this. Bring your attention to your left leg again. Press your left knee against the floor. See how it is now, how your pelvis rolls now when you press your left knee against the floor. And then press the, your left hip joint against the floor to lift your left leg and bring your left leg down again and then switch over in your thinking to your right leg, press the right knee against the floor a couple of times, <laughs> feel how your pelvis lifts and rolls and then press your right hip joint against the floor so your right knee comes off the floor. Bit by bit this should become easier. When you think of your pressing your right hip joint against the floor, you could even think of lengthening your right leg, of pushing down your right foot downwards, away from you. And then of course a combination of pressing your right hip joint against the floor, keeping keep your leg up and press your left hip joint against the floor so both legs are up. You can, uh, you can play with this pattern of pressing to, or press your left hip joint first and then your right hip joint so you roll over your pubic bone. Now, as a next movement, we need to bring our attention a little bit of the, to the suppleness, to the mobility of the chest. So, if you will, look straight ahead, kind of place your chin or your forehead on the floor and both arms alongside of your body, body, body downwards. So your right hand is on the right of your torso, the left hand is on the left of your torso. And then start with your right hand to reach down towards your right foot. And up again, so you lengthen your right hand downwards and then afterwards your left hand downwards and let your head just lie on the floor and let your head roll. While once you reach downwards to your right foot, 
and once you reach downwards to your left foot, you can start with this very slowly, very, very tiny, small movement, of course, before you make it bigger. And of course, you need to put your nose somewhere out of the way. But look at my nose. My nose is so big and I still can do this movement. So there are ways to have the head roll on the floor while you reach once with your right hand and once with your left hand. And let yourself fall into this movement, let yourself become this movement when you roll your shoulder girdle, when you roll your spine in this way. Of course, we can also play this with a stiff neck. So, <laughs> just for example, place your hands on top of each other and then place your forehead onto your hands. So you have a little packet and then move this packet to the right and to the left, which is also a side bending, but without the rolling of the spine. Or you could have your head turn to the right or turn to the left. Just some ideas of how you can prevent movement in the spine or how you could invite movements with your spine. Then we <clears throat> continue swiftly in this sequence. We are building a pattern here. Again, return to your, bring your attention to your left leg and press your left hip joint to the floor. And see, if you do this, if you press your left hip joint to the floor and allow your left leg, your left knee to lift off the floor, do you feel that in your neck? Do you have like an incentive, uh, a feeling of lifting your head off the floor or maybe even lifting your right arm off the floor? So when you lift your left leg off the floor by pressing your left hip joint upon the floor, in which direction is your head swiveling? In which direction is your head moving? So when you press your left hip joints against the floor, maybe reach with your left hand towards your left foot and raise your right arm up and follow with your eyes your right hand. Or if you would turn that around to press your right hip joint towards the floor and reach with your right hand towards your right foot that is lifting off the floor and also lift your left hand, your left arm off the floor. Look at your left arm overhead. So your right hip joint against the floor. <clears throat> and if you initiate this movement by pressing your hip joint against the floor, and then lift the leg and then lift the head and the arm. So everything might be very easy if you ease into it with this method of easiness. And how does this feel like when you combine the movements, when you press both hip joints at the same time or slightly in succession against the floor? what patterns of extension will emerge from this. And always, of course, take rests in between, short rests, and then tension again. Uh, mix 
not a mix, a succession of tension and relaxation. <clears throat> and before we go deeper into this pattern, <laughs> let's try a same side activation. So press down your right hip joint and move your head in a way over to the left so you can lift your right arm and your right leg and then also your left leg and your left arm and you can stretch yourself out as if you would be jumping into the water in the summertime and then relax back onto the floor so you come into a full stretch with your arms and your legs and if you do this in the right sequence you might even roll onto your side with both your legs up and both your arms overhead <laughs> extended and then back onto the floor a very strong activation of the back extension muscles and driving the hip joints forward And in this fashion, you might even roll from side to side. So let's try this a little bit. That's why we need the space to roll a little bit from the right to the left by ways of pressing the hip joints against the floor. <laughs> okay, so let's not overdo this. Let's take a break on the back and just check in on the back how it feels like. How, how do you feel like lying on the back after this strong extension by ways of the hip joint? <laughs> isn't this something quite nice isn't it so but let's continue with the pattern turn around once again come to lie onto your front side have your head turned at least a little bit to the right and <clears throat> start by pressing your left knee a little bit against the floor so the left knee against the floor, just to check that you're supple, that everything can move. When you press your left knee just a little bit, your left hip joint lifts and your pelvis rolls to your right and your ribs are differentiated. So it's your rib cage doesn't roll as a cage, but bit by bit, vertebra by vertebra, there's differentiation between each rib. like a towel yes so there's no tension in a towel and then bring your attention to your left hip joint and press your left hip joint against the floor so that your left knee might lift your left leg might rise and then the same thing with your right leg so the head to the left and you press your right knee a bit against the floor to see that you're subtle and at ease and then your right hip joint against the floor all right and then back your head to the right and your left leg extended both legs extended push your left hip joint against the floor and at the same time bend your right knee alongside the floor so draw up your right knee on the floor so Instead of pressing your right knee against the floor, draw it up on your side, on the floor, while you press down with your left hip joint on the floor. So let's try this again. 
Starting position on your belly, you press your left hip joint against the floor and you draw up your right knee on your side. Yes? And see what it does to your head. Allow your head to react, your spine to react. And as a next step, do the same thing. You press your left hip joint against the floor, you draw up your right knee and pull down your right elbow towards your right knee and then move your right arm behind you. And up again. Okay, so let's start again. You're on your front side. Press your left hip joint against the floor. Draw your right knee up on the floor. Bring your right arm behind you and your left arm up on the floor. And this is a similar situation as we had in the last lesson. <coughs> and back again. And continue to make this split bigger and bigger. until you can turn onto your back and stomp down your right foot. So, in fact, it's not a totally different lesson altogether. It's what we have been building up towards now with the past three lessons. And there's an order of things. So feel, you really need to feel and sense, to come to your senses intensely, be very aware, very present, very mindful in this moment. So you start with your left hip joint, you press up your left leg, you draw up your right knee, you bring your right hand behind you, you roll over just in the right moment and stomp down with your right foot. Stomp with your right foot against the floor. So you draw up your right knee and you stomp with your right foot. Just like we did it two lessons before in this series. And then find the same way back onto your front side. All right, and then the same thing on the other side. So you start on your front side, you press down your right hip joint against the floor, you draw up your left knee, you bring your left arm behind you, and then you stomp with your left foot on the floor. And if you do this slowly enough and carefully enough and mindfully enough, you will find many nice moments in this, don't you? Like, almost like a stretch. Some movements feel just right. And then go from the right to the left, from the right side to the left side. Stomp and roll and stomp and roll and make it bigger and faster. without losing any precision. So stay precise, stay mindful while you're doing it more often and faster.
until you have the feeling of wanting to stomp with both feet against the floor and drive your pelvis up, just like we did two lessons before. <laughs> All right. So <clears throat> I hope you're having fun. I hope you're going a little bit crazy. <laughs> you're rolling and stomping and you're having fun. Okay, then let's take a last rest on the back and see how you feel after this marvelous hip extension of this integration of the hip joints in a whole body pattern, whole body movement and a movement that evolved from a very small movement of pressing the knee against the floor to this crazy rolling and stomping that involves flexion and extension. An ecstatic movement almost. Now, all that's left to do is to roll up and see how it feels like in standing. We need to face the world in standing. So, how do you feel in standing after this lesson? How do you hold yourself? How do you hold your belly, your lower back, your chest, your head? How do you balance your head? How do you feel your hip joints? Hip joints that integrate now so neatly into this overall posture, a balance between extension and flexion. So I hope you found this interesting, you had a good time. Thank you so much for watching, thank you so much for your support and see you in the next video.